Daniel, you just raised 120 million in Series C funding. That is a huge number. What are you planning to do with all that cheddar? <laughs> Good morning. Um, yes, that was our Series C. We'd raised money pr previously from um, Google and Sequoia and others as well. And frankly, we're trying to reinvent the whole world of insurance. So Lemonade is about trying to rebuild insurance from the ground up, not only basing it on AI and technology, making it seamless, instantaneous, inexpensive, but also changing the fundamental business model. So trying to neutralize the conflicts of interest, trying to build an insurance company that doesn't make money by denying your claims, that has a, an unconflicted relationship with its consumers. You know, uh, homeowners insurance, renters insurance as well with the new funding, does it mean more engineers? Does it mean expanding beyond those two options for insurance? It does, so both global expansion and product expansion. But you know, insurance is one of those interesting spaces, unique I think, we're hearing the stock exchange, 10% of the Fortune 500 are insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And most of them have been around for 100 years, some of them more. Really our ambition is to try and, and bring about a changing of the guard, to try and enable new kinds of insurance companies that will rise to be of those kind of proportions. So having somebody like SoftBank with $100 billion behind them mm -hmm. is the kind of war chest you need if you're going to take on that kind of an incumbency. What international markets do you feel like could really use this? You know, I, I think we appeal to younger consumers, the digitally enabled, the ones who conduct their lives on their smartphone, except when it comes to insurance, and then they've got brokers and paperwork and fax machines, which they barely know what those are. Right. And frankly, those kind of consumers, whether they're in New York City or Berlin or Tokyo, they have a lot in common. They use the same brands, they use Airbnb, they use Uber. There's no reason why they shouldn't be using Lemonade. But Daniel, what is broken about the industry here? I mean, yes, there are pain points certainly in the industry, but what's broken and what can you solve? It starts with distrust. I think distrust is frankly almost a trillion dollar problem. So what happens in insurance is, if I don't pay your thousand dollar claim, I'm a thousand dollars richer, you know that. You feel entitled to embellish your claim. 25% of Americans tell people when surveyed that it's okay to embellish claims. Um, the other 75% were brought up not to admit that kind of thing to strangers. So what happens is that <laughs> fraud becomes endemic, distrust becomes endemic, and then you get this tit for tat and it spirals onwards and downwards because then the insurance company thinks, well, I'm going to treat you as a criminal because maybe you are, you feel wronged, so you embellish your claims. It's fundamentally broken. The question isn't what's broken, it's what's working. Which brands within the sector are loved? Which brands in the sector are trusted? Why is something that's doing such a critical economic function, no plane would take off without insurance, no doctor would operate without insurance, which is performing a fundamental social good, helping people when their house is burgled or burnt to the ground. Why is it perceived so negatively? So in Lemonade, we were really going back to first principles and asking those questions. Why is such a critically important function perceived so negatively? And can we build it so that it would be lovable, trustworthy, delightful? words that you don't typically associate with insurance. What was it like working with SoftBank on this round? A singular pleasure. Really, all of our investors have been fabulous, and SoftBank as well. And I think SoftBank, with the Vision Fund and with the money that they're deploying, have a faith that there is going to be a fundamental change. And that while we can say today that the brands that dominate now dominated 100 years ago, 10 years from now, we won't be able to say that sentence. So they do think big, and they want to deploy capital in order to bring about those changes in a fundamental faith that artificial intelligence is going to create new kinds of companies. Now, people love touting artificial intelligence and machine learning, and maybe I've got a food delivery app, and I'll talk about machine learning all day long, but at the end of the day, I'm delivering sushi. Mm -hmm. Insurance is just statistics. When you peel everything else away, it's about data. So as disruptive as AI can be in other parts of the economy, I think doubly so in insurance. Mm -hmm. You recently said that you're sticking with homeowners insurance and renters insurance and you're not actually branching, at least at this point, into auto insurance. Why is that? I think we will be branching and we've got quite a lot of novel products that we want to bring to market, but auto insurance specifically is of less interest, I'll put it that way, for a couple of reasons. One is there's a secular trend against this sector, so car ownership is, is declining. Because of the rise of the Ubers and Lyfts. Precisely. So it's Ubers on the one hand, so you see that people are using cars as a service. Then the autonomous vehicle is going to fundamentally change the dynamics of auto insurance and car ownership. So I think that companies that have that as a fundamental part of their business are scratching their heads and saying, what does our business look like in 10 years' time?
Also, Drew Daniel, of course, we know that your company did take a step after those horrific Las Vegas shootings to restrict its coverage of guns here and outright refusing, actually, to cover assault rifles. Was that a no-brainer for you, or do you feel like that was a risky step to take at the time? It was definitely a risky step to take, and I think it was also a no-brainer in the sense that insurance companies, I think, can't be neutral. When you sell a homeowner's policy or a renter's policy, you are insuring people from harm to their guns and by their guns. Mm -hmm. And now you can either say, well, we're just going to maximize profit, sell as much of that stuff as we can. And indeed, most or many insurance companies have special discount rates for NRA membership, and they encourage that. Well, you say, one second, we're trying to build a company that is mission-driven, that is values-based. Are we comfortable with that position? Mm -hmm. So what we did was we said, look, we're not taking a position that says gun ownership is wrong. That's not a position that we're taking. Mm -hmm. But there are limits to what we feel comfortable covering, and we can't be neutral on this. So yeah, assault rifles, we won't cover assault rifles. We'll cover guns up to $2,500, but no more. So if you have a personal gun for your own protection, that's great. But if you're a collector of 50 rifles, we're not the right insurance company for you. Mm -hmm. And finally, we insist that you look after those guns responsibly, and you guard them, and you secure them in a secure way at risk of losing your coverage. So those are big changes that nobody in the industry has done until now. How flexible is that policy of yours? Do you foresee it changing down the road? On guns specifically? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we'll try to be attentive to what our customers want and we'll have to refine it as we go. But I think taking a principled stance on this is something that we won't change. Daniel, you've raised more than $150 million. It's at $180 million now, according to Crunchbase. Uh, Pre-money valuation right now, $500 million. What's the end game here? It seems like this company is perfectly set up to be acquired by one of the incumbents. The end game is to become a large insurance carrier and a global brand. So if you look at insurance on a global basis, you have companies like AXA in France, which did $150 billion this year and has been around for 200 years. Um, Allianz in Germany, 130-year-old companies. Insurance produces companies that do $100 billion of revenue and last for one, two, sometimes 300 years. We'd love to be one of those. All right, well, on your way with this new massive round of funding. The company now valued at $500 million, right? It hasn't been disclosed. Okay, well. But it has been rumored. <laughs> has been rumored. Okay, you want to disclose it right now? <laughs> no, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, well. Feel free anytime. The rumored $500 million, maybe you'll have to come back, Daniel, when you, when you are ready to disclose it. Thank you again for joining thank you. us. Thank you so much. Daniel Schreiber there, of course, the CEO and co-founder of Lemonade.